Hello, my name is Paul Stewart and I've lost my glasses somewhere in Germany. So hopefully I'm at Frankfurt International Airport where we're about to fly to Tokyo with Lufthansa in their business class product. Now what I'm most excited about today is that I'm flying in a new Boeing 747-8 which is the upgraded version of the Dash 400 model which I've never flown in before. It's quite a rare aircraft with only three airlines picking up the passenger model. So coming up is my thoughts on the business class product and me being sentimental about the Queen of the Skies. Now I could talk for ages about how significant this aircraft is and I probably will later on in the video, although for the time being let's return to my arrival at the airport and visit the lounge. Make sure you turn right and head to Lufthansa's premium check-in area. From there it was a brief trip through customs, which of course being German was very efficient, and then onto the business class lounge. The lounge itself is pretty good with heaps of seating and food and drink options. And for my subscribers across the Pacific, this is called fruit. Hidden in the corner are these pretty comfortable looking seats. If you want a nap or if you want to make a phone call, you can stand in these semi-private booths. We definitely need these in Australia. Or maybe just police snipers for people using FaceTime on maximum volume in public areas. Although, I digress. There's a number of showers which were available straight away. After drying my hair, I headed off to the departure gate early to catch my aircraft arriving and to get a look around a whole range of aircraft that are quite rare in Australia. Here is an Airbus A340-600, which was the longest passenger aircraft, even more so than the A380, until the new 747-8 was released. That aircraft, which you can see now, was a single metre longer. So more about the Dash 8. The reality was that the 747 was aging and Boeing were concerned that the new A380 was going to dominate the market, so they had to decide between designing their own all new super jumbo or simply upgrading the current Dash 400 model. They went with the latter idea, which has probably saved them billions of dollars, as we now know the market is moving towards big twins and Airbus will struggle to make any money on the A380 project. So as a part of the upgrade, Boeing lengthened the fuselage, which is most obvious, with the upper deck, which is now considerably longer. They redesigned the wings, with the removal of wingtips being the most obvious difference, and the engines were upgraded. Now I accept that the A380 is the most comfortable aircraft to fly in, although it's not a looker. This aircraft, on the other hand, is in my opinion the best looking passenger airliner in the world. Comment below if you agree or disagree. Anyway, the flight was called and it was time to board. Downstairs, business class is in a 222 layout and there are no storage bins under the windows, which is why upstairs is better. There's also something cool about walking up the stairs in a 747. The reason I selected the back row was because I was keen to get a good view of the wing and engine and I certainly can't complain about that although I ended up being close to the galley which was pretty noisy when I tried to sleep later in the flight. Now I'll run through the seat in more detail with the obvious highlight being the massive storage bins under the windows. Without them storage would have been a real problem with this seat and is why you should select the upper deck window seats if you can. The obvious disadvantage though is that you need to climb past your neighbour to get out into the aisle. The adjustable TV screen moves around and responds to touch and I'll go through the in-flight entertainment in more detail later. The seat itself is a reasonably old design and while it looks good, it's a generation old. Most business seats these days offer privacy and direct aisle access for each passenger.
Unfortunately, there were no overhead air vents, which is something airlines seem to be removing. This is quite frustrating as I often find cabins too hot and I really appreciate the steady flow of air, especially when trying to sleep. After 20 minutes, a welcome drink of sparkling wine was brought around and here's a look at the amenity kit. The major supermarket chains in Australia have started charging people for plastic bags and it appears that the bags are now all being used by Lufthansa. These are not class leading. Good afternoon, or rather almost good evening ladies and gentlemen, and one welcome to you from the flight deck by your captain, Thomas Heineke is my name, and the welcome to Flo Lotta on behalf of my entire team. After a short delay, we pushed back and headed for the runway. Oops, the British are back, although this time it's just a BA Airbus A320. Check out my channel for my review of that aircraft. After some great views climbing through the clouds, a warm towel was brought around and a round of drinks. This was had while enjoying the colours from a setting sun. The meal service began and I apologise for the poor lighting. The food and drink tasted fine, although the whole process took over two hours, which was rather unfortunate as I was tired and hoped to get to sleep shortly afterwards. Thankfully, since the armrest moves down, you're able to slide out and leave your seat while the table is still in position. There are three toilets in the upper deck with two at the front and one being behind where I was sitting. They were stocked with basic amenities. As I was tired, I put the mattress on the seat and had a nap. Now you share a ledge with your seatmate, although there's a divider. It's still a bit weird looking at a stranger's feet when you're trying to sleep. And as the cabin was already quite hot, I didn't use the blanket. After a reasonable six hours of sleep, I woke up and breakfast was served. I'll include the food and drinks menu at the end of the video. I was keen to stretch my legs and went for a wander around the aircraft and captured a few different views of the beautiful wing. By the way, this sawtooth pattern on the engines is designed to lower noise and works to smooth the mixing of the hot and colder air. You see a similar pattern in the 787 engines and in the upcoming 777X. I then returned to my seat and looked through the in-flight entertainment. You can either use the remote hidden under your armrest or touch the screen directly. For me, it was just easier to lean forward and touch the screen. The system is adequate, although clearly aging. There was an okay selection of movies and TV shows, as well as live TV, which is what I mostly watched. The touch response was okay, although it did freeze on occasions when it was loading very slowly. There were a few ads before the movies, although they could be easily fast forward through.
the slow descent into Tokyo's Haneda Airport began. For me, it was fantastic flying this aircraft type for the first time and I'm glad to hear that the passenger version will remain flying for another two decades, as most of the older Dash 400 models will be retired in the next few years. If I was to compare it with the A380 from a direct comfort point of view, I'm fairly confident it would come up inferior. It did seem noisier, especially on takeoff, but it's really hard to comment on the air quality and relative humidity. I'll certainly say though that the Dash 8 looks a lot better, both from the outside and when looking out of the windows. For those who are fans of the Queen of the Skies, the Boeing 747, you may be interested in checking out my videos where I walk through the first ever 747 located at the Museum of Flight in Seattle and a longer tour through our retired 747-400 in Wollongong. Links to those will be in the video descriptions below. Now to talk about Lufthansa's business class product. It was average. The seat itself has good lumbar support, but otherwise there is no privacy whatsoever as this footage demonstrates where you can see my neighbor's arm. We awkwardly hand touched once whilst reaching for our drinks. Fortunately, the upper level has the storage bins under the windows, although if you're on the lower level, you'd have to store everything in the overhead bins and therefore interrupt your seat mate every time you wanted anything. The other issue with the window seats is that you need to be agile to climb over your neighbor once their seat has reclined into a bed. The food and drink offerings were okay and the service, well, it took two hours to serve dinner, so that kind of answers your question. The crew seemed junior and stressed. I was really excited about flying in this aircraft type and the Lufthansa business product was quite a letdown. And of course, I'm giving away the amenity kit to a lucky viewer. Simply comment below and include hashtag Lufthansa amenity kit within 30 days of this video being published and you're in the running. Full details of the giveaway are in the video description below. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more similar ones. Check out my channel for heaps of other aviation related videos. Before I finish with the menus, here's our plane parking next to an ANA 787, which was my next flight. I'll be uploading my review of their business class product in coming weeks, and spoiler alert, it was much better. Thanks for watching, I'll see you another time, and here's the menus.